Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can tap into the Chaos Data Interface to introduce some really cool Niagara effects on your Chaos Destructible Meshes. Okay, I'm going to get started in a new first person template project. And first thing I'll do here is grab this cube in the corner and I'll go to Fracture Mode and I'll make a new geometry collection. I'll select the Uniform Fracture tool and select Fracture and I'll fracture it again. All right, back to select mode here. Under the details panel, I'll find show bone colors and set that to false. And I'm just going to drag this cube actually to the middle of the map here. And what I want to do is I want to create a field that's going to be an explosion to blow this fractured mesh up. And uh, what I can do conveniently is use a master field that Epic has made and left in the engine contents here. I can go to settings, show engine content, and I'll just select the engine folder here and I'll search for master field. I can find this FS underscore master field. I'll just press control D to duplicate that. Uh, you don't want to modify engine contents, typically want to duplicate that and move it into your own content folder. So I'll do that, just drag it to my content folder here and I'll turn off show engine content. And back in the content folder, I'll just rename my duplicate here to FS underscore explosion underscore field. Okay, and I'll just drag that into the scene here. And uh, the way these are set up is basically the field is uh, set up to do any number of things that you might want to do with a typical physics field. Uh, so in the details panel, I can find these options, uh, like the activation type, for example, I'm going to set this or leave this on uh, delay activation, you could also set it to on tick or a trigger. Uh, the delay amount, I'll just leave it here at one second. And uh, the field settings I can set up, for example, to apply external strain, which I want to do to break our mesh. And then I want to apply uh, some linear and angular velocities. So I'll say to use this radial vector and set a radi radial magnitude here of maybe uh, like 1200. And uh, use directional vector, I will check to true. And uh, I'll leave the directional magnitude at 1200 as well. And uh, so now let's just give this a try here. I'll press play and we can see the effect on our chaos uh, destructible mesh. All right, so what I want to do here is add the Niagara effects uh, to this so we can have uh, some trails from our broken pieces. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is just right click here and make a new Niagara system. I'll create an empty system and I'll call it trails underscore FX and I'll open that up and the first thing I'll do here is I'll just press plus next to user parameters and I'll find chaos destruction data. And uh, now I'll press E for a new emitter and I'll just add a simple sprite burst. I'll select properties here. I'm going to change this to GPU and I'll select uh, fixed bounds here. And I'll select uh, emitter update and the lifecycle mode here I'm going to select system. And I'll also uh, delete this spawn burst instantaneous and I'm going to press plus here next to emitter update. I'll select plugins here and I'll search for chaos and find spawn from chaos. And then under particle spawn here, I'm going to press uh, plus and I'm going to find chaos again and, and uh, add apply chaos data. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is for both of these, uh, spawn from chaos, I'm going to select uh, the drop down here next to the interface. And I'll just type in user and find my data interface here. Same for apply chaos data. All right. Uh, and what I'll do now is just drag one of these into the world. It doesn't matter where you place this because the particles are going to be positioned according to chaos data anyway. Uh, so just position it somewhere and in the details you can find under override parameters here the data interface parameters and I'm going to set the data source here to trailing data. Uh, the data process frequency maybe I'll set to 20 times per second. Uh, max number of data to spawn particles maybe 100. And uh, I can also set here, uh, let's say the min speed to spawn trails. We'll set that uh, to 10. All right, and then I'll select my geometry collection here, the cube. And uh, under the details here, I'll find uh, notify breaks, notify collisions, 
and uh, notify trailing. I'm going to select all three of those. Uh, and then I'm also going to go to my project settings here. And I have to find uh, generate trailing data for the world solver. We'll set that to true. All right, and uh, we'll give it a try here. All right, so we're spawning our Niagara effects according to uh, trail data. Uh, so now I just want to tweak the effects a little bit here so it looks like uh, something like uh, fire and smoke. So what I'll do first here is uh, on the first emitter here, I'm gonna make uh, the sprite renderer material fire sub UV. This is from the starter content. Uh, and this is a, a six by six uh, flipbook sort of thing. So I'm gonna set the sub image size here to six by six. And I'll set uh, sub UV blending enabled. Uh, and then what I'll do here is on the initialized particle, I'm gonna set the color to sort of a deep yellow, just on the border of orange and yellow, somewhere in there. And uh, I'll set the sprite size to maybe 75, a little bit bigger. And I'll set the sprite rotation mode as well here to random. And under particle update, I'm gonna add a couple of modules here. I'm gonna add a drag module. Uh, and I'll also add an acceleration module, acceleration force. And I'll set the acceleration force on the Z axis to maybe one, 100. All right, and then I'm gonna also need to add a sub UV animation module. All right, and what I'm gonna do now is uh, select the module and press Control D, uh, the emitter I should say, to duplicate the emitter. And what I wanna do is under initialize particle, I'm gonna change the color here to a darker orange sort of on the border between uh, orange and red this time. And uh, I'll set the sprite size maybe a little bigger, maybe 100. And uh, let's see, for the sub UV animation, I'll set the sub UV loop count to only 0.5 to get some extra variation there. Uh, and then maybe for acceleration force, instead of 100, we could do something like maybe uh, 50. Okay, and so that's uh, some flames there. Now I wanna make some smoke. So I'll actually start with one of these uh, flame emitters here, Control D again, uh, but I'll change the sprite renderer material here to smoke, smoke sub UV, also from the starter content. Uh, and that's an eight by eight, so we need to change this sub image size here to eight by eight. And uh, let's see what else here. I'm gonna go to initialize particle change the color to sort of a medium gray, medium to light gray, I guess. And the uh, sprite size, quite a bit smaller. I'll start out at 10 actually, and add to the particle update here, I'll add a scale sprite size module. And uh, what I'll do here is we'll scale the sprite size. I'll start out, I'll select the first key here, and we'll start out at a uh, size of one and uh, I'll select the final key here and we'll scale up to a size of five times larger. All right, so it's gonna scale up five times over the lifetime. Uh, and I wanna change the lifetime actually. I'll go to initialize particle and set it to maybe three seconds. And uh, I'm gonna also change that for the flames as well. For initialize particle for both of those, I'm gonna change it to one second only. All right. And so uh, for the smoke emitter here, I'm going to duplicate that as well, press Control D. And for the second smoke emitter, I'll change the particle color to uh, quite a bit darker gray. And uh, I'll change the lifespan here to five seconds for this one, and maybe the size to 25, so it'll become uh, quite a bit larger over time. And, um, Let's change the acceleration force for this one to 25 only. All right, um, pretty happy with those settings so far. So let's take a look and see what we've got. All right, so not bad. Certainly uh, could use some tweaking and uh, could be a lot better with uh, some time spent. 
but it's the basic idea anyway and uh, shows you how to work with Niagara effects that uh, spawn based off of chaos uh, collision data. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the next video.